welcome back to Food Prep Guide. We are making elderberry syrup today. Now I have a large amount from my elderberry trees and I want to go ahead and process all the elderberries at once. So I'm going to be doing a triple batch. This is 20 cups of elderberries, but I understand that many of you watching this may not end up having that many elderberries. So what I'm going to do is post the original normal like one batch size of elderberry syrup and I'm going to put those amounts in the description box below. But I'm going to be going ahead and making a large batch. So I'm going to be starting with 20 cups of elderberries and then all the ingredients that you see me add next, just bear in mind that, that those are triple the amounts. Okay, let's get started. By the way, if you would like help building your food storage, scroll down to the description box of this video and click this link for our free one year food storage plan. We calculated a year's supply of food for one person, then broke that data down into a week by week list of items to build your pantry on a budget. We'll send it straight to your inbox. If you're new here, we invite you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss all of our upcoming food preservation, pantry storage, and gardening tutorials. Now back to the kitchen. So like I said, we have 20 cups of elderberries here, so we're going to add 27 cups of water. I've already got that measured out, and I'm just going to pour this big bowl in. You may notice that I have bits and pieces of stems and leaves in here. Um, I pick out as many as I can, but I'm not going to worry about getting every little last piece So, because we're going to be putting this through a strainer in a minute and uh, that will strain out all of that anyway. Okay, so next is one and a half cups of lemon juice. And this is the Santa Cruz Organic. That's my favorite type of lemon juice to use for anything that I'm making that needs to be as high quality as possible. One and a half. Next, we need three teaspoons of ginger. Now, the recipe calls for ginger root. I don't have fresh ginger root. If you do, you will be using a half an inch um, like slice of it and just kind of chop it up, mince it up real small, but I don't have that. So instead, I'm doing um, a half an inch of ginger root converts to approximately one teaspoon. Okay, we are boiling. In fact, it almost boiled over. So I am going to now lower it down to a simmer and we're going to let it simmer for 40 minutes. We want the lid to stay on. You might need to let it prop up just a little bit if you um, overfill your pot like I do. <laughs> but we're going to let this simmer for 40 minutes before moving on to the next step. Our juice has been simmering for about 40 minutes, so now it's time to move to the next step. We need to basically separate the juice from all the berries and some stems and stuff that I have in there. So I'm going to be using a nut milk bag. Um, this is what I use for blueberries, so it's nice and purple now. But you can use a cheesecloth if you, you can use just like a regular strainer basket and put a cheesecloth in there. If you don't have cheesecloth, you could even double and triple up some paper towels and put it in there. Um, just something to catch the debris and allow the juice to go through. So I'm just going to scoop this out. I'm probably going to have to do this in a few batches because this is a lot of liquid. So now that we have our juice poured into the nut milk bag, now we just need to basically strain this out. So I'm going to come over here. This is one reason why I really like using a nut milk bag is because it has these built-in loops. Let me bring you up a little closer. But it has these loops that make it easy to do this next step. So I'm just going to loop that around my cabinet knob here and start twisting the bag. It is very, very hot. So I have a pair of tongs here that I'm going to be using as I, I'm just going to start the twist with my fingers. And then I'll start using tongs because it gets really hot. I'm basically just continuing to twist, which is putting pressure on the pulp inside and helping it come out a little bit faster. If you have time and um, you know, you're not in a rush for anything, then you can absolutely just let this bag hang and it might take probably an hour or so for it to all get 
extract it out. I have multiple batches of this to do, so I don't want to wait that long. That's why I'm doing this step, just to help move it along quicker. Okay, we have all of that juice strained out. So to make the actual syrup, all we have to do at this point is add our honey. Um, you can also add a little bit extra lemon juice. You can add one quart to the batch that you just did. Now remember that is triple. So not one quart, <laughs> one cup, <laughs> one cup of lemon juice, but that is tripled. So if you were doing the original batch, you would only need to add about one third of a cup of lemon juice. Um, but if you're, as, if you're not canning it, that, that extra lemon juice isn't 100% necessary. What is necessary is the honey. Um, you want to use raw honey if possible and local honey if possible. And uh, local is 100 mile radius and that is just going to give you some extra immune boosting qualities because it is those bees are using pollen and stuff that's local to your living environment. Um, so if, if that's possible, that's the absolute best that you can do. The honey measurement doesn't have to be exactly precise. What the honey does is you have your immune boosting abilities that we just talked about, but it is also going to allow you to store the elderberry syrup in your fridge for a very long time. If you were to store the syrup, or it's not syrup at this point, just juice. If you were to put this juice straight into your fridge as is, you would have to consume it within a couple weeks. It would just, um, it wouldn't last. But using honey and a pretty healthy amount of honey is going to allow your syrup to stay in the fridge for the entire, excuse me, the entire winter season um, and get you through all of the um, sickness season. So I am have, I scooped out just over two quarts of juice here and I'm going to add this whole container of honey, which is just over a quart. I have seen people do equal parts juice to honey, one quart juice, one quart honey. Um, and I've seen people do half, so one quart juice, half a quart of honey. So anything in between there, I think you're good to go. And I know I'm talking a lot in uncertain terms as far as ingredients goes, um, but you really do have a lot of wiggle room with making elderberry syrup and elderberry juice, but I will put the exact recipe with all the precise ingredients and stuff in the description box for you and remember that is going to be for just a single single batch to get all the rest of this honey out I learned a good tip from my mom and that is to scoop out some of the hot juice that we it's already hot and put that in your jar I'm gonna make a big mess just a little bit more and just put the lid on and shake it up and get all of that good honey out of there I'm going to wash my hands. Um, anytime you're working with elderberry, just in case it's your first time, it only takes one time for you to realize this, but just in case it's your first time, elderberry will stain your skin and your counters. So anytime any drips fall on my counters, um, I even have some splash up on the back of my backsplash when I was transferring the juice, um, you'll want to get a sponge or a wet rag and just go ahead and wipe that down pretty much immediately so that you don't have any staining going on. 
And at this point, it's just heating it up enough. I just have my eye on a low simmer. It's just heating up that honey enough to make it nice and thin and incorporate it into all of the juice. It's not going to take long because the juice itself is already hot. Oh, I can already feel it's already, it's already incorporated well. a little clump over here. Okay, that feels good. Nice and incorporated. Um, at this point, glass jars are going to be best just because you don't want to put hot product into plastic jars. Um, so I'm just going to be pouring this into some glass jars. How am I going to do this? <laughs> Let me see. I don't know if that fits either. Yes, it does. Okay. I need to be six feet tall, but it'll work. Let me turn that off. Okay, y'all, it really is that simple. Here we have elderberry syrup. This is gonna go straight into my refrigerator and this will be the first batch that we'll use next time um, we feel like we have a little bug. So let's talk about how to use it. I'm not a doctor um, and so this is not medical advice. It's just, just what I have done with my personal family. Uh, whenever it is, whenever we know we've been in contact with someone who has been sick, we go ahead and take a tablespoon a day just as precaution. And then when we start feeling under the weather, the very first sign we start feeling under the weather, we will start taking a tablespoon, a tablespoon every three to four hours all throughout the day. Um, you're not going to necessarily, it's not like an overdose issue, um, but that just seems to be the amount that works for us without going overboard with it. Um, I know that some, some of you might be wondering, what about canning? So I just want to address that real quick. So elderberries, are there's no approved recipe for canning elderberries and that is because elderberries range greatly in their acidity um, you can take an elderberry plant where i live and get like an acidity level of let's say 3.7 and you could go up north and an elderberry plant and get an acidity of 4.7 which is above that level of being high acidity where it wouldn't have to be pressure canned so because of that big variation in acidity levels, there's just no tested, proven, safe recipe. Does that mean I don't can it? No, I do. That's what I'm going to be doing um, with this. Now, I told you in a past video that anytime we uh, stray from tested and proven recipes, I will let you know that and disclaim it. So here's the disclaimer. Uh, this is not a tested and approved recipe. But here's why I feel comfortable doing it for my family. Number one, uh, where we live, since I'm a gardener, um, I know my soil very well. I've been working with it for years. Um, I know that it is high acidity. I just know that our soil in this area is high acidity. And these elderberry trees go right outside my front door in my front yard. Um, so I know where they have been growing. I know that it's been you know, good conditions. I know that the soil conditions are going to be acidic. So there's that. And number two, just to make sure that we are above that are excuse me below that 4.6 acidity level i go ahead and put a tablespoon of lemon juice per pint jar now i, I only can i would only can in pints or lower not higher up in quarts um, but so if it would be a half pint you would use half a tablespoon of lemon juice per half pint 
one tablespoon of lemon juice per pint. And then you're gonna put that lemon juice directly in the pint jar and then pour the juice on top of that. That way you know for sure that that particular pint is acidified with lemon juice. It's the same thing that we would typically do with like some tomatoes sometimes. If you don't know the acidity of your tomatoes for sure, um, it's, the same, it's the same way. Well, I also have pH strips. And anytime I am doing a recipe that is not strictly by the book, I will always, always test the pH. Now, elderberries, because of their color, they can kind of skew the, the color of the results on the pH strips. But again, I know my soil because I've been working with it for years as a gardener, and I'm going to be adding an extra acidifier with that lemon juice. And I will be water bathing that for 10 minutes. Remember to adjust for your altitude, and it's a quarter inch headspace. But I will tell you that in the past, I have only made syrup and just stored it in my fridge and it has stored the entire season. So canning really isn't necessary unless you have a bumper crop of elderberries. And that is the only reason I'm canning it this year is because we have a lot of elderberries and I don't want that many jars taking up space in my fridge. So I'm going to can the juice. I'm not gonna put honey in it at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the juice back up to a very gentle rolling boil and put them in my jars and process them just like that without the honey. When I run out of these in my fridge or I see that I'm getting low, I'm gonna go ahead and do what we just did, which is bring a pot of, I'm gonna open up a pint or two of elderberry juice, pour them in a pot, bring it to a low simmer, add some honey, do it up, put it in jars, put it in the fridge. And that's how I'm gonna cycle through the elderberries. And with the amount of juice we got this year, we might possibly, that might possibly go, get us over through through next flu and cold and flu season as well. Um, so I think that's about it. This is one of our favorite ways to help naturally protect and shorten a cold and flu virus. Hope that helps y'all and we will see you next time. Bye.